Okay, continuing on today with the UNSW integration B from 2020. This was problem B3. We have the integral from 0 to pi over 2, cosine squared x over sine x plus cos x dx. Okay, now this was an interesting one. The first thing that stands out to me is just the way this looks. If we were to change the exponents on this, let's just get rid of this square for a second. What if I were to just write this, who cares what the exponent is, let's just call it n on all these. Well, if we have the same exponent on everything, this is going to be just pi over 4. So this case is when we use King's principle, and we can do it in like two seconds. But unfortunately, we don't have the same exponent on everything. But now, even though we don't have the same exponent on every term, I think we can still use the same technique. We can still use King's principle on this, but we're going to do a u substitution. So let's try this. So for our u substitution, we just add the bounds, and we get pi over 2 minus x. Solving for x, we're going to have x is pi over 2 minus u, and taking a derivative dx is going to be minus du. So when we do this, let's make the substitution. We plug pi over 2 in here. We have 0 for the upper bound. We plug in 0. We get just pi over 2. Then plugging in for all the x's here, we're going to have cosine pi over 2 minus u squared. And then we're going to have this is going to be sine pi over 2. Everything's going to be pi over 2 minus u. And then for our dx, it's just going to become minus du. But now we can use the minus sign and bring it out front and use it to swap the bounds. So we'll put that back so it's like the original. But from here, what we want to do is we want to simplify sine pi over 2 minus u, cosine pi over 2 minus u. But for each of these, what we have is we can use the complementary angle formula. So we have our complementary angle formulas over here to the right. And so it's just going to flip our sines to cosines and our cosines to sines. So let's just do this and rewrite it. So now cosine pi over 2 minus u, this is going to become sine of u squared. This one's going to become cosine of u, and this one's just going to become sine of u. But here what I'm going to do, I just want to do a variable change. I want to get everything back to x because I'm trying to add these two together. And it's a definite integral, so it's fine if I change my variable. The variable name, the variable is not going to change a definite integral. It's not going to change the area under the curve. So I'm just going to write this all in terms of x. Then from here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to name, we'll call our original integral i. And so this thing is still i. And we'll add this copy to this copy and see what happens. So doing that, this is going to give me, we're going to have two copies or two i, same bounds. We have the same denominator, different order, but the denominator is just going to be sine x plus cos x. And then adding together our numerators, we have sine squared x plus cosine squared x. But what's that? That identity is just one. But now at this point, it's starting to look more manageable. And now what we can do is for this denominator, I can just notice we have the same coefficient on the sine and cosine. It doesn't really matter that it's one, because even if it was something else, we could factor it out. And even if it wasn't one, we could still simplify this with an angle sum or angle difference formula for sine or cosine. Let's just look at that right now. Okay, so I thought I would just do this quickly over here to the right. But again, we have our angle difference for cosine. Now, we've already inserted in the angle as pi over 4, just knowing that the coefficients are the same. So I'm going to use pi over 4 here. If we just do that out, we get this second line here. But then cosine pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2, and sine of pi over 4 is the same thing, 1 over square root of 2. Now, the only thing is, in this here, our coefficients are just 1. Well, that's easy to fix. If I multiply by a square root of 2 here, I can do it multiply by a square root of 2 here and multiply by square root of 2 here. Well, this cancels and gives me the 1s here. So this is the same thing if we just multiply by square root of 2 in front. And of course, you could use the formula to calculate this, but since the coefficients are just 1, it's kind of easy to just remember to use pi over 4 here. So let me just take this here, and we'll put this back into the integral, and we'll continue. OK, so now that we've rewritten the denominator, we're getting pretty close to being able to integrate this thing. Now, what I'm going to do, let's just pull the square root of 2 out front and rewrite this. So I'm going to write this as 1 over square root of 2. Rewrite, rewrite. Now we're going to have 1 over cosine of this stuff. 1 over cosine is just secant, so I can write this as secant x minus pi over 4. Now you could do another substitution here, but it's really unnecessary because the derivative of this is just 1, so it won't do anything. So let's just go ahead and integrate. Let's not forget this is still two copies we're dealing with here. So we have 2i. We'll have our 1 over square root of 2 in front. The integral of this is going to be natural log absolute value secant of our input plus tangent of the same thing, just using the formula. 
And then we still want to evaluate this from zero to pi over two. Now let's just evaluate everything. So we'll, we'll keep our one over square root of two in front here. Natural log. Now secant of pi over two minus pi over four, that's just gonna be secant of pi over four here. And then same thing, this is gonna become tangent of pi over four. Okay, and then minus, then we have to evaluate at zero. So this is gonna give me natural log, absolute value, secant. Now we're gonna have minus pi over four here. Let's just leave that for a second. And then we're gonna have tangent minus pi over four. Now let's just go ahead and simplify everything. Now secant of pi over four, well, cosine of pi over four is one over square root of two. Secant is the reciprocal, that's just gonna, so this is just gonna give me square root of two. Tangent of pi over four is just one. Now, secant's an even function, because cosine's an even function, so this minus can go away. So this is actually the same as this one, so this is still gonna be square root of two here. Then tangent is an odd function, so we can take the minus out here, turn that to a plus, but then we have tan pi over four, which is just one. So then what I can do is, by the property of logarithms, I can write this as a fraction. We'll still have our, we'll still have our one over square root of two in front here. This is gonna become square root of two plus one over square root of two minus one. But everything here is positive, so I can drop the absolute value and just put parentheses there. And then I just need to remember that we have two copies, so let's just divide by two here and divide by two here. And we've got our final solution, one over two square root of two Natural log square root of two plus one over square root of two minus one plus C. No, just kidding. And that's it. Okay, good problem from UNSW 2020. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.